So you're trying to get your acoustic guitar recordings to sound full and thick and beautiful and all those really nice words. The problem is, if you're anything like me when I first started recording acoustic guitar, it maybe sounds kind of like this. So how can we change this? How can we make our acoustic guitar recordings and mixes sound nice and thick, but not too thick? Nice and thin, but not too thin. How do you make them wide, but not sounding too weird? Like all these things, I'm gonna show you how to get a good balance, to get a good sound that actually sounds real. We're not plugging in an acoustic guitar. That just sounds like garbage. I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way, the real way. And there is a four step process involved in achieving that result. So let's dive in. Here is how you can record and produce your acoustic guitars to sound awesome. All right, so here is my session, and these are all our acoustic guitar tracks. Let me kind of make these a little bigger. And there's one part in the song, of the song in particular, that I wanna show you here, and that is this instrumental, because this is where the guitars really um, are heard the most, and so that is where we're gonna start. So here's what it sounds like. And then in context with the mix. So the first step to get your acoustic guitar recordings to sound full and big and beautiful and all that good stuff is you just gotta get the recording right. Now, this is not complicated at all. Literally, I'm just gonna show you a couple of things that I did with regards to recording this in. The first thing, I set up my microphone in the basically the center of the room. That's just a standard thing. Your room doesn't have to be great. It can be a terrible sounding room, but you do wanna get as far away from the walls as possible. So start there, middle of the room, and you're good to go. The next thing is I put my microphone, which I just use my standard Aston um, I just forgot the name of my microphone. It's Aston Origin. Aston Origin condenser mic. It's like a $200 mic, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. And I put that between 12 and 18 inches away, which is standard. And then another thing with mic placement is, and I learned this from Graham Cochran like a decade ago, and I've used it ever since, is when you're recording your acoustic guitars, place the microphone so that it is directly in front of the sound hole, again, about 12 to 18 inches away, not right up on it, but in front of the sound hole, but angled towards the 12th fret, because this gives you a nice balance of, you get the nice treble and the high end from it being angled towards the 12th fret, but you still get the nice warm body of the guitar since it is directly in front of the sound hole as well. So those are just a couple very basic, nothing fancy. I didn't do anything crazy. And even the guitar itself, this is just a seagull guitar. I think it's maybe, I got it for about $300 at a used guitar shop. It's probably four to 500 new. Again, not a tailor, nothing crazy. We are just using very, very basic stuff. So that is step one. Just get a nice basic setup, just some basic rules that I just told you, and then you are ready to dive in and record the tracks. Now, speaking of recording the tracks, step two is you want to record multiple mono tracks to create that layered stereo sound. Now, let me just speak my mind and be honest with you about something for a second, which I'm usually always honest on this channel. I'm usually not dishonest, or I tr very hard try not to be. When you are recording acoustic guitars, please don't use two mics. Don't try to mic up at two different places. It is just such a hassle. It's so unnecessary in my opinion. You don't need to do it. It just creates more work. It creates more potential problems with things like phasing. And it just doesn't make sense. The, the hassle does not make sense, especially if, if what you're looking for is a nice wide guitar sound, then just record multiple takes and then pan then left and right, which is what we did here. So let's start with this acoustic guitar on the left. Um, let me take off the plugins here on this bus channel. That way you can just hear it exactly as it was recorded in it, and then we'll talk about those effects on that group channel here in a second. So, right, this is what it sounds like going straight in. Now the next track is a different take. I didn't copy the same audio. This is completely new audio. This is a different take, just recording the same part, right? And then 
layer those. And that one is panned down the middle. And then this one, the next one here is panned to the right, right? And then we also have these little melodies. And for that, one pan left, one pan right. Again, different takes. There's no copying of, of the same audio. That just turns up the volume. That's all that does. So there it is. That is step two. Create multiple mono tracks to create that layered stereo sound. And again, please don't use two mics. You only need one mic per take and you are good to go. Just record multiple takes. All right, step three for getting that full acoustic guitar sound is you gotta get the EQ right. Now, when it comes to EQ, I just have a simple stock EQ here in Studio One on each one of these acoustic guitar tracks, and this is what it looks like. Let me, uh, here, let me come over here to this one that's down the middle, and I'll show you what I did here. So here is without the EQ. And here's with it. it. We got rid of some of the mud in this range, right? So let me uh, turn this up so you can really hear what it's doing. It's that range. Too much of that, right? When it's here, so we turn that down. And that really cleans it up. So on most acoustic guitars, you want to make some kind of cut in this low mid range between 200 and 500 hertz. That is, you can run with that as a rule of thumb. And then another thing you wanna do is get rid of all of this junk down here. This range here on acoustic guitar is information that is not needed in your mix. This is the range where the kick drum lives, where the bass guitar lives, where the synth bass lives. Having the acoustic guitar be present all the way down here does absolutely nothing. There's no value in that. So I always roll that off. Like you can just play this by ear. But you bring it down here, you know, where you still hear that nice warmth, but it's not completely, but you don't have all these frequencies below 100 that you don't really hear anyway. Now there's one more EQ move that I almost always make on my acoustic guitars, and that is in the range between 2K and 5K. And there's a very specific reason for this. 2K to 5K is where the lead vocal specifically really dominates. And so you don't need a bunch of those frequencies on the acoustic guitar to pop through. So let me show you what it sounds like if there is too much of that frequency, and then I'll turn it down. So it's, this is the range, right? It's that bright, tinny, in your face sound. Listen to that. Something like that. Here's again without that EQ. And there's with the EQ. Huge difference, right? Now, there's one more thing. We're not done yet because this these guitars are still a little bit bright for this mix. And I'm gonna show you, because this is also sort of related to EQ, it actually is very much related to EQ. What I did here with these acoustic guitar tracks is I sent all of them to the same bus channel. So as you can see here, acoustic, they're all being sent through this bus before they go to the, to the main output. And this, by the way, is step four. So let's just make sure that we're clear and make sure that we stay in line here. Step four is group the guitar tracks and add a nice plugin or two on the acoustic guitar bus. Now, if you follow my stuff for any length of time, you know how much I love RC20. And so what I did is I grouped the tracks together, sent them all to this bus. So now when I solo it, that's all you hear, right? But it's still kind of, there's too much high end, right? It's too tinny. Listen to what happens with the RC20. Here's without it, and here's with. So huge difference, right? I started with the vinyl three preset and then I just made some adjustments. I think I turned off the noise because I already have an ambience noise track at the bottom of this mix. So I didn't need more of, uh, I didn't need more texture like that. So I turned it off, but everything else I think pretty much is this vinyl three preset. And inside this plugin here, I did roll off a bit of the EQ. So what's happening with the EQ inside of RC20 is basically this, right? It's doing some form of this, which warms up the top end and RC20 is just an incredible plugin. 
and it really helped warm up these guitars. And then finally, I did add one more EQ after, just because I was hearing still slightly too much low mid-range. And then uh, I just added that to the entire guitar bus, and then also sent these guitars to a little bit of plate reverb that I have set up on a return track there, so. So that is it. Those are the four steps to getting a really nice acoustic guitar tone. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I have a little gift I want to give you before you go, and it is my free guide, The Seven Steps to a Killer Indie Song. Indie music is what I teach here. That is my niche. And so if you are into indie music and you want to get better at recording a song, not just recording, but writing it, recording it, producing it, mixing it, like actually creating a song from start to finish, you are going to love this free guide. So so I'll leave a link in the description. Again, it's 100% free, so be sure to check it out before you head out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.